In the upcoming lessons, I'm going to show you how you can build a form using JavaScript that's going to use Ajax to submit the form content into Google Apps Script and then using Google as the backend server, send out an email and also track the form submission data into a spreadsheet. So that's going to be all coming up in the lessons. My name is Lawrence. I'm going to be your instructor for this course. I come to you with many years of web development experience and I really enjoy working with JavaScript and Google Apps Script. And this is going to be the perfect project for a lot of students that have been asking me how they can incorporate and how they can send email form data to their email addresses without backend coding. So this is going to be a solution where we're going to be using JavaScript code as the front end code and then retrieving that data with Google Apps Script, which is just like JavaScript in the cloud, and then using the Google Apps Script services in order to send the email, create and update spreadsheet data with the form data coming from the front end code. There's a lot of really great functionality that's gonna be presented in the upcoming lessons on how you can construct a web form. So setting up the form with HTML and then selecting the form input field data with JavaScript and then how you can set up to set an AJAX request to submitting the data to an endpoint. And that endpoint that we're going to be creating the lessons is going to be done with Google Apps Script, setting up a web app that can retrieve both get and post method requests. We send the data from the form field into the Google Apps Script. It will handle the data, send out an email to the user, a response email to confirm that that email has been received. Also, update and add the email form data into the spreadsheet it can be made use of within the spreadsheet. Source code is also included so that you can build your own version of the application. So let's get started coding and creating some amazing things with JavaScript and Google Apps Script. So in this lesson, we're going to be setting up our input field where we're going to be taking a value for a name, an email, and a message using JavaScript in order to select and submit the content. We've got some error checking that we're going to check to make sure that the fields within the form, that there is a value for the name and the email. If the values are not shown, then we're going to throw the error messages down here at the bottom. If there are values in there, then we're going to be able to submit the form. We're going to be sending that out, getting the form input field values as an object in order to prepare to send using Ajax to the endpoint, which we're going to be setting up in the next lesson. In the HTML file, create an HTML file that can serve and is going to hold the form content. I have a form opening and closing tag and then determining what content you want within the form. So I'm going to just have it as an H1 tag. And this will be to send a message. And then let's go ahead and we're going to add in the labels. So we can have each one of the fields within a parent div. And then those can be sitting using a label. So the fields that we're going to be asking for, so one of them is going to be name. So setting up the input field for the user's name, set the type as text, and then the ID can be as name. So that will attach the label to the input field. We also want to get the email address from the user, so we can add that in as a separate label and set that to be email. And with HTML5, there is some validation if you set the type as email. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. We can also do the validation using JavaScript. And then lastly, let's uh, copy that and we're going to add in one more where we're going to be just asking for a message. And this is going to be a text area. So that will allow the user to enter in more text into the area and set it up using the ID of message so that we have consistency with the other fields that we've set up and then close off the text area. And then lastly, we will need a submit button. And this is going to be what we're going to be looking for in order to submit the form content. So we can set this up as an input and the type is going to be a submit type. So that will automatically submit the form content as the button gets clicked and then add in a value for this and the value will be send message. And you can customize this as needed. So that creates our basic input field with uh, information. And let's uh, update the labels so that uh, the labels are not going to be wrapping the input fields. And then we can have some information within the labels. 
such as the name. Uh, this will contain the email and then this is where the message will be added. So save that and that will give us this type of structure for the fields. You can also apply some styling to the input fields so that we can set them to go full width across. And I'm going to apply a little bit of styling to the labels and for any of the label tags. Uh, this will just be display and I'll set it up as a display block. So that will give us a clear layout for the message fields. And now we're ready to bring the JavaScript content in. So let's go over to the JS file and this is where we're going to be linking the JavaScript code and submitting the content. So let's set up a default URL and this is where we're going to submit to. So we're going to create that with the Google app script and that's just going to be serving as a placeholder. We just have the one form, but I'm going to give it an ID as well. And this can allow us to have multiple forms within our web page and we can more easily identify the form that we want to use. So let's select that and create a variable called my form. And then using the document query selector, we're going to select the element by its ID. So that's going to select the form contents. And now we can add an event listener to the my form object. So let's add an event listener and the event that we're going to be listening for is going to be the submit of the form contents. And when the form contents are submit, we're going to run a function called submitter. So let's create that function. And then this is where we're going to handle the submitting of the content over to the website to the endpoint. So we want to select that and we want to actually prevent the default. So prevent the default action, which will stop the form from actually submitting and allow us to run an, the JavaScript code selecting the contents from the form. So when we click submit or send email, this function is running and within the console, let's output submitted so that we can see when we go over to the console, the contents of the form being submitted, I make this slightly smaller so it fits on the screen. And when we do press send message, that's submitting the form. If we don't have the prevent default, what's going to happen is that it's going to actually send the form and it's going to send it to, it's going to make a request to the endpoint. And that's where it's adding in the question mark at the end. Uh, so it's actually submitting the form. So if we had content there and we submit it, it would be sending it over to the new uh, to the endpoint URL. And since we don't have one listed within the form, it just simply adds the question mark and sends it over to the same web page. And with the prevent default, that's going to stop that default action that's contained within the form on the submit button. And this gives us an opportunity to validate the form contents by selecting all of that form content. So let's go ahead and we're going to select the fields. So we're going to select the name, the email, and the message. We can get them all by the IDs. So this is going to be the my name and then using the same format where we're doing a query selector, we can select the element and get the value of the element by its ID. And we'll do the same thing for the email and then also for the message. And that will give us a way to select the contents of these fields. So this is the message and we've just given them all IDs. So that makes them easy to select from the page using the IDs. And you can also use the get element by ID or the query selector to select the element from the page. So now that we've got the elements as objects, we can then select and get the values that are contained within those objects. So we can do some validation of the content to make sure that the input fields, they all have values that are added in. So let's select a value. And we can have some parameters where for the name, we can make sure that the my name does have a value associated with it. So we can have a condition in my name value. As this is going to be a string, make sure that it is larger than, or if it's less than five, then we're not going to submit the form and we're going to throw an error. And then we can also have multiple conditions to make sure that there is a value for the email. So let's uh, check to make sure that my email does have a value. And we can also check to make sure that the length is there as well. And then return back within a message. So let's create a message. And right now this will just be blank. And if there are any errors, then we can apply to message. 
and we'll add to the message whatever the error message is. And in this case, we'll return it back as HTML. So we can create a message like that where name needs to be five characters, email needs to be five characters long. And now that we've got the error messages, we can check to see if the message is there. So if there is an error message, then we can return back. So if there is an error message, then we can respond back. Otherwise, we'll submit the form content. So within the console, so we're going to be ready to submit the content. And if there is an error message, then we want to output the error message to the user. So we'll go ahead and we'll create the element for the error message. And this can just be a regular div using the document create element. And the element that we're creating is going to be a div. And this is going to be where we're going to display the contents of the error message. So within the div, set the inner HTML to whatever we've got as the contents of the message, as there's going to be a value if uh, none of these are being met. And then for the div as well, style, we can set the color of the text to be red. And let's prepend it to the form. So within the my form, we're going to use that as the parent and prepend the div to the form. And then we'll also have a way to remove it. So let's first try that out. And that gives us this information where it needs to be five characters, needs to be five characters. And this actually should say that email is missing. And you can customize these as needed. So that's going to provide us the error messages. And we also want that error message to disappear. So we don't want it just to be sitting there. So we can set a timeout method and have that timeout method run where it's going to clear out the email message. So setting the div and just do a remove of the div element. And we can set that to be after two seconds. So let's try that out. And that will actually disappear the content. Uh, we can also do an append. So we can do it after the form. Uh, so again, depending on how you want to style that, that will show the error message. You can also have a more complex function here where maybe we want to update some of the styling of the content. So removing out the div, but we also want to update the input field styling. So this will set the style of my input and set the style it's red border color. And this will update the, my email to set the border color. And then once we remove the div, we'll update the, so that will default it back to the original color. So that gives us the red. And then after the time is up, then that's going to convert that back into the default color for the input. So it's going to be removing that out after two seconds. You can also set this to five seconds or whatever uh, time span you want for these errors. So if we do enter in a value here and we do the send message, it's only going to flag the email. And once there is a value within the email, then what it's doing is that's actually going to be the default. So when we do a send message, now we should be okay to submit the content. And we do see that within the console that we've got the uh, content is being ready to submit. So that's uh, what we needed for the capturing. And we also want to then send and construct the values that we want to send out. So we'll create a value for that where we're submitting the content. And within the else, this is where we're going to prepare the object. So call it my object. And this is the object that we're going to be submitting to the endpoint. And it's going to include a name. And the value of the name is coming from my name value. Like after, after we've checked out and made sure everything is working properly, uh, then we know that we can send the message. So the email value, and then the message is going to be within the my message value. So that will construct the object, and I'll output the object as we're ready to submit it within the field. I'm also going to update some of the input values. Uh, so we can remove that, but this is just for testing purposes. As I'm creating this, uh, so I have a default value that's set for these fields. And then also for the email, let's set a default value for the email. Uh, so this is just my default email that I'm going to be using. And of course, you want to be removing these once you're ready to send the content. So that way I don't have to type it in. Uh, so plus whatever number or dot whatever number. So that will 
uh, be able to send it to a specific email address. So this will all go to the email address without the plus, but it, with including the plus, this is a way that you can differentiate the various emails that are being sent. And then that's coming up next where we're gonna be sending this object of information over to the endpoint and retrieving it using Google Apps Script. So once we've created the way to submit the content, we need to create the function for sending the email. And this is gonna be contained within a function that's gonna actually send the email using a fetch request, so an Ajax post to the endpoint. So that's coming up in the next lesson where we're gonna create that and then send the email over. Just set up the styling for the form. Now this is optional. Uh, so let's set a width of 90%. I'll set a margin of automatic to center it and select the input fields. And we'll just select and set the input field width to 100%. And then also comma separate out. And we can add in the same thing for the text area. Add in a little bit of padding to those elements. And I'm also going to be adding in the box styling and do the border box. So that will structure the content a little bit better and we can bring this back to 100%. So that will fill out all of the available field spaces. Let's apply some custom font styling. Also for the button, so that provides some styling for the submit button. And you can apply your own styling as needed to this to the form field. And I'm just updating the label. And for the submit button, let's do a border radius. And then I'll leave it to you. If you want to apply additional styling, please feel free to do so. We're going to be updating our Google Web application so that we can insert data from the JavaScript and using Ajax to send it over to a spreadsheet. And this is going to be in preparation before we email out the response and email us that someone has made and sent a message. So these fields, whatever values we put into the fields, this is what is going to be tracked into the spreadsheet. I'm going to make some updates to the default values that I have within the input fields. And we hit send message, and that message gets sent over through the Google Apps Script using post, and then retrieved back and updated within the spreadsheet. So that's what we're going to be working on in this lesson, creating the functionality in order to send from the HTML form using JavaScript and making an Ajax fetch request to the endpoint of the Google Apps Script, retrieving back the data that's being sent and posted, and then matching it up with the fields that we have in our spreadsheet and adding that data from the input fields directly into the spreadsheet using post. For this lesson, you will need to have a Google account as well as a Google Gmail account that you can retrieve the emails in. And we're gonna be setting this up with Google Apps Script. If you've never used Google Apps Script before, so this is free, as long as you've got a Google account, you can go in and log into your Google account, go to script.google.com, and from there you can create Apps Script projects. Google Apps Script runs as JavaScript, within the cloud, within the Google Cloud, and allows you to connect to the various Google services. You can also create web apps, and that's what we're gonna be using as an endpoint to submit our content to, and then let the Google Apps Script handle the submission of the content. So let's go ahead and create a new project. Give this project a name. So this is gonna be the online editor. I'm gonna make the screen larger so the code is easier to read for this project and up the editor to the full size screen and give the project a name. So emailer, and I'll just call it emailer live. And you can give it whatever name makes sense. And this is how you can reference it within your Google Drive or when you go into the app script in order to make updates to the file. So with Google Apps Script, there are some default functions. And one of the functions to use as a web app is the do get function. So rename the default my function into do get and add in the event object. So that's going to be the e parameters that we're going to be receiving from the endpoint when the content gets submitted. And then within there, we can retrieve back the event object information. And what we want to do is we want to return it back using the content service function in Google Apps Script. And from here, we can create text output. So this is gonna simply output content into the web page. So if we were to write hello world and output that as text content into the web page, 
and then go and deploy it as a new web application. And this is what you need to do in order to get a web URL. So in the top right hand side, under the deploy button, select new deployment. This is going to open up the new deployment interface. From selecting type, select web app. And this is going to allow you where you can set up the web application. Testing. And this first one is just going to be testing the output. So enter in a description. The next question is going to be execute as. So this is the account that's going to be executing the script. So if you want to send the email from your Gmail account, then this is where you need to select the execute as. The other option is to the user accessing the web app. And since this is going to be a JavaScript post request to the endpoint, we're not going to have a way for the user to uh, add in their own email address. So you do need to set it to execute as your own account. And the other option here is who has access to the web application. So this is where we've got Google permissions to see who can see the web application. So the first option, only myself, needs to be as an account that's going to the web app URL and logged in to the account that's being executing the app. So we don't want to select that one. We also don't want to select anyone with a Google account because that means that our endpoint would have to log into a Google account. And we want to select the last option, which is just anyone. So anyone that has the web URL, which is going to include the Ajax request to it from our JavaScript code is the one that we want to select. So once you've made uh, updated these fields, select deploy. And once the script is deployed, you're going to get a copy of the web app endpoint. So you can select this or you can click it and that's going to open up within a web URL and allow you to see the output that we've created within the application. And we want to do the same thing where we want to use the e-parameters and this is going to be content that's being sent in to the e-parameters. Now we're going to update our web application to simply return back the e-parameters using the JSON stringify method, which is the same as JavaScript where we select in the e-parameters. Since we've already deployed it as a web app, we can go into the test deployments and that will give us a URL that's going to update as we update the Google Apps Script code. So let's take a look at when we get the URL for the test deployment. And we can go ahead and we can click that and that's going to open up whatever the current path is that we're outputting. This value can also be updated so that we're outputting it in a specific meme type. So let's go ahead and we're going to set the meme type for the output of the content that we're outputting using the content service using the function set meme type and the meme type that we're using is going to be from the content service and the meme type is going to be JSON. So this is going to actually output the content in a JSON format so that we are ready to retrieve it with our endpoint. So let's do another refresh of it and now we've got the content being output within the format. We're going to take that again. We'll copy the web URL and we'll add in some parameters. So parameters can be added in with the question mark. And just as we saw when we submit the form, that gives us the parameters. So parameters would have the property parameter name and then whatever value was associated with the parameter. So in this case, we're passing in a parameter of ID 1000, name of Lawrence. So let's click that and we'll see that we now we get the output within the parameters. So there's two objects here where we've got the parameters contained as an object and this can contain multiple parameters or just under parameter itself, we can retrieve back the information just getting the parameter value. So this is the data that's being passed in and we're also going to be responding back with that same data. So returning that back at the endpoint. So let's go ahead and we're going to go back to the JavaScript code and we're going to send a test request to the endpoint. And now that we've created the web app endpoint, we can go and we can select that URL for the endpoint. So under the new deployment, and this is going to be just for the get request, and we'll deploy so deploy a new web URL, and then copy the web URL, go into your JavaScript code, and where we've got the URL, paste that in. So that will give us an endpoint URL that we can make requests to. You can also try the URL out in your browser. So I'm just sending in a parameter of ID 1000, and this is using a get request. So I'm going to go ahead and create 
a function that's going to handle the request to the endpoint, and this is going to be done using JavaScript. So we'll send over the object data, and I'll uh, email, so add send mail, and it's going to send that mail object of the data. So create the function to add send mail, and then this is where we're going to get the object data. So this is can just use a variable name as data within the parameters. And we want to make a fetch request. So making the fetch request to the URL, by default, it's going to make a get request. Once we retrieve back the response, and because we've set it that the response is going to be returned back as an object, you can retrieve that back. And within the fetch request, there's a parameter, a method called JSON. And this is automatically going to convert the content into a JSON format. And then we'll output the result here as the response back. And this is going to be the data response. And we'll keep it out as JSON. And then what we'll do is we'll log that into the console. So whatever we've got here at the endpoint, we'll get back as and so right now we're not sending in the data. Uh, we're just making a request to the endpoint. So we'll go ahead and we're going to try out the add send mail request to the endpoint. And then this can be anything here within the parameters. So I'm just going to use a string value. And what it did is it retrieved back. This is the response back coming from the get request to the URL. We've got the parameters within the object. So let's do an update of the URL. So do the call it URL one. And using the URL, we'll add to it the question mark and a value for ID. So now when we do make the send request to the endpoint, we should retrieve back within the parameters a value for the parameters. And this should actually be sending to URL one. So make a request submitted. And there's our value back within the parameters of ID 100. And because we want to make this as a post request, so we're going to update this and update the code so that we can retrieve it back as post. And we'll pick up the payload within the endpoint as well, just as we're just doing with the get request. In order to do a post, the function that we use within Google Apps Script for the web app is going to be named do post. So just as we did the do get, update this to do post. And I'm actually going to select the parameters from the post data. So this is going to be slightly different. And we'll pull out the JSON content that's being sent from the web page and using the JSON parse method, as it's going to be a stringified value that we're sending. So we're going to select under the E parameters the post data. And from the post data, let's get the contents object. So that's going to return it back within a JSON, a JavaScript object format. And then here we can also update that since this is going to be an object. So take the status and I'll just add in a custom status as success. And then outputting the response back, we're still going to be setting it as a JSON meme type, the E parameters, we're going to stringify the JSON value. So once we've created that, we're ready to deploy. So we're going to create a brand new deployment and I'll call it new post. So this is going to create a new web URL for the web app that we can post data to. Copy the new URL and let's go back into the web application, select the URL that we're using and we'll make an update of that. So we should still be able to send a get request and we're going to just update this. So copy the function where we're adding the mail and I'm going to just comment this to be get. So that will be a completely different function. And then now as we're sending the data, I'll uh, console log the data out into the console so that we can see the data that we're sending. We're going to sending it to the URL and then we can comma separate out and add in some custom parameters such as the method so we can specify the method. So we're going to try it out with get as the get endpoint should still be working. Send the get request and we retrieve back the response there from the get request as the parameters. And now let's do update this to post. And within the post, we want to send a body of content and the body of content is going to be coming from the data. And this is from the data that we have. So it's JSON stringify the contents of data. And this is coming from the web form. So try that out and do a request. So this is now sending a post request. And it's returning back the data just as we see it within the object. But we've added in the status of success. And that status 
of success is coming from the updated object data within our Google Apps Script. So we're able to retrieve that object data, and this is coming from the web page, and now we can make use of that content. And for now, what we'll do is we're gonna add it into a spreadsheet, go into the drive and create a brand new spreadsheet, and just create a brand new blank spreadsheet. And for now, we're gonna insert the data into the spreadsheet. So for the spreadsheet, once you've created it, we're gonna to need to get the ID of the spreadsheet and we're gonna be appending the content coming from the web app and appending it into the spreadsheet. So go into your Google Apps Script Editor and within the spreadsheet URL, copy the ID. So every ID and every sheet is gonna have a unique ID within the web URL. So get it after the slash D and then just before the slash edit. So that's gonna be the ID for the web URL for the spreadsheet data. And we can just give this one a name. So we'll just get it email contents for now. And then go back into your Google Apps script and within the post function, set up and add in the ID. And now let's connect to the spreadsheet by its ID. And this is gonna be logging the form data into the spreadsheet. And then once we've got the form data going into the spreadsheet, then we're gonna be able to add it as an email that's gonna be sent out and also response email back to the user that's made the submission. So once we've got the ID, we want to select the spreadsheet object and you can select the spreadsheet object, setting up a variable for it and then using the spreadsheet app service and then opening the spreadsheet using the open by ID method. And this is where you would insert the ID of the spreadsheet. And we also want to select the sheet itself. So we select it by using another method called get sheet by name. And this will select from the spreadsheet a particular sheet within the spreadsheet. This one has a name of sheet. Let's update this to emails. And then that's the spreadsheet that we're gonna be selecting. And this is gonna allow us to use that sheet object where we can insert data directly into it. So once we've made the selection, I'm gonna to add to the row of the sheet object using the append row method and adding in the JSON data. And we're gonna stringify it so that it's gonna be within the one value. So we're gonna apply it as JSON stringify and we'll stringify the JSON object as a new deployment. Create a new deployment, call it sheet data. Copy the new web app URL and add that into your application as the main URL that we're sending the request to. And now when we send the request and we go into the spreadsheet, we can see this content is being inserted into the spreadsheet. Let's uh, take this one step further where we've got the values such as the name, so we'll send in these values into the particular fields. So going back into the apps script, where we're gonna select the content from the spreadsheet, get it as data, and then insert it into the particular fields that are the corresponding fields to the data that's come in. So selecting the const, we can get all of the sheet data using the spreadsheet, and then the get values, we actually have to get the range first. So get data range, and then we can get the values from the sheet data. So first we'll do it as a testing function. And then once it's working, cause it's a very hard to troubleshoot the do post method. And we wanna get the content that was originally inserted here. So that's gonna be this object data and select that. And we're gonna try to insert that as the object data into our spreadsheet according to the property fields. So I'll clean that back up again, and then go into where we've got the object data. So this is gonna be a string value with the object information. And this is just a tester function that we can run within the Google Apps Script Editor so that we can also debug the application. So we're gonna to need to get the contents of the spreadsheet so you can copy the information to get the ID. And that gives us the same spreadsheet object that we are gonna be working with. And we want to get all of the values from the sheet data. So let's also include that information. So we've got all of the content as sheet data, we've got the string value, and this is the data that's being sent in from the E parameters and we're parsing it out as JSON. So let's do that as well, where we're gonna parse it out as JSON data. So that's coming in as a string 
and then do the JSON parse and parse the string content. So this is in order to simulate and it does have a debugger where we can use the log in order to see that, make sure that we've got the content properly. And then also within the logger log, let's out the, put the sheet data values. So we'll output those both into the log. Uh, let's run the tester function. You can do that within the dropdown of the dashboard menu here, selecting run, and that should output both of those values. So we've got all of the statuses there. And if we wanna see only the first row within the sheet data, this is gonna be if an array format. So let's indicate it with the index value of zero. So that's gonna return back the sheet data as row data. And that will give us a value that we can iterate through in order to retrieve back and to check to see if the values within the JSON object are gonna be matching. So if we've got matching property values, we can insert those into the sheet data. So let's go ahead and we're gonna loop through. So using the sheet data with the index value of zero, and because this is an array, we can loop through each one of those and then output one each one of those values. So this is actually gonna be the heading value for the row. And we can output and check to see and add in that content. So we're gonna construct a new array that we're gonna set the data into. We're, we're also gonna pick up the index value as we iterate through the sheet data. And then let's create an array that we can add and this is gonna be just called holder and started out by creating a blank array. And then for holder, we're gonna push and we'll add into it the result that we have for the heading. Within the JSON, we can select the item with the heading and add that into the right object. And because we have the index value, we don't have to use push where we can set the specific index value of the heading in. So check to see if there's a value for the JSON heading. And if there is, that's when we're gonna insert it into. And then here, we'll just log out the holder contents. And that should give us a structured array within the right order where we can add it in to our sheet afterwards. So that gives us the name, the email, the message, and the success value. So the status value, so those are all there within the email in the right order. So next up, we can just simply select from the spreadsheet object where we got the sheet by name, by emails, and then use the append row method and add in that holder row directly into it. And let's uh, test it out one more time. Just make sure that it's working. Go to the sheet and it looks like we're getting it out as an object. So we don't need to wrap it with the array and try that one more time. And this time we're getting the values inserted properly. So delete the content that we have in there. And now that we're getting the structure proper, uh, we can make some updates to that object or we can just simply copy this information and now apply it into our sheet where we're setting this data in using the do, po the do post. So we've got the ID of the spreadsheet and uh, let's make a little bit more space here. So remove out the ones that we're duplicating. So we already have the ID. We already have the spreadsheet that we're selecting. So we wanna get the sheet data. We don't need the string value and we don't need all of the logs out because we're not able to see the logs on the post anyway. Uh, so what we wanna do is we want to parse the JSON content. So it's coming from the input fields that we're adding it in. So just update that JSON to parse it. Uh, we're gonna need the holder as well. Uh, we're gonna loop through the sheet data just as we did within the testing. Uh, let's also update the JSON object with the status of success. And then for the sheet data, we don't need to append the row because we've already got a function that's gonna be appending it. And then we can simply return back the value. And I'm actually gonna update the JSON with row value. And we're gonna set that from the spreadsheet object and get last row. So that will be a numeric value indicating which the last row object is. So let's go ahead and we're gonna deploy it. I'm gonna deploy it as a new deployment again. And you can also use the manage deployments which will redeploy it to the same web URL, but it does take a few minutes to update and that's why I'm using a new deployment and creating a new URL so that we don't have to pause the video for the script to be able to update. 
So I'm gonna call this one post ready and go through the same configuration settings. Hit the deployment, copy the web URL. And now let's go back into our JavaScript code, update the URL, and we'll do a submission of the content. And we'll wait till we get the response. So we do get the response back. We've got a row value. And now that's inserting that content into row number two. So I'm gonna open up the spreadsheet on the left-hand side, and I'll open up the web app on the right-hand side, and we'll try it again. So this time, let's update some of the values on the input fields. So update them so that we can test it. Update the message, and press send. So now what that's doing is that's inserting those values into the spreadsheet so that we can see the values of the spreadsheet data. I'm gonna update this and just do some bolding of this and I'll make the spreadsheet a little bit bigger. And then all of these fields, uh, let's update and we'll adjust the uh, font size to be re really small so that we can see the content within the one field as it's getting inserted. So now we've got a way to send data from our web app using JavaScript. So we're submitting content in and then that content is being tracked right now within the spreadsheet. So the next step in this process is gonna be sending out an email to the user, sending out also an email to our account to let us know that someone has sent a message. And then once we get a success response where we've got a row ID, then we can uh, add that to the user when they make the Ajax request updating this that their message has been sent and received. So that's all coming up in part three of the web app. So in this lesson, we are gonna be wrapping up our application where we've got a web form that can send content over to our Google Apps script, retrieve that information with a post request, add the contents from the input fields into the spreadsheet under the name, email, and message. So whatever values we've got here, we're gonna add those in. And then also we're gonna send out an email to the user's email as well as to our own email address in when we do receive the, the message. So go ahead and try it out where we do a send message, we get a waiting, and then once the message has been completed and it's been sent, we get met your uh, message sent, your ID is six. So the ID is actually gonna be the role value that we've inserted it into the spreadsheet. So there's the new row of data that's just been inserted. And if we go over to the inbox, there's our new content that we've just sent over. So we've got our thank you for your email with uh, the, so it gives us the user's name that was within the input field. And then the message received ID number six. So again, that's gonna correspond with the role value. And then for all of the content that was submitted, so it doesn't matter if the email was valid or not, we're always gonna get an email message to our own inbox and this is gonna be whatever the contents of the form are. So even if the user does not put in a valid email address, we're still gonna receive an email within our inbox whenever this has been submitted. Let's go back into the Google Apps Script and we're gonna update the do post to send an email once that submission has been sent. And we're also gonna keep the spreadsheet data in. So we've sent it in as the last row and within here on the next line of code, this is where we're gonna send it as an email. So we can just get all of the content and we'll create a brand new function. So we wanna send all of the JSON content over into a function and I'll just call this send my email and we'll create that function. And it's gonna be just picking up the JSON object and we can also set it up and get another value for result. And this can just be whatever we get the return back value for this function. So now let's create the function, send email, and this has just got all of the JSON data that's coming from the form. So we wanna be able to send an email. Uh, we also wanna check to make sure that it's a valid email. So I'm gonna create another function that's gonna allow us to validate. So this is gonna be doing a similar to the JavaScript test where we can do a validate email. We get the email value and it's gonna return back a Boolean value to check to see if it's 
uh, valid email or if it's not a valid email. And if it is a valid email, then we're gonna send an email to that user. So let's do a check and we'll check to see if within the data, the email is gonna be a valid email address and we can pass it into the validate email. And if it is, then this is where we can send through the mail. And if it's not, then we'll just return back a value of false. So this will return back a Boolean value. And here we'll return back a value of true. So this will allow us to check to see if we've got a valid email. We'll create a second test email function. And this is where we can try out sending out some emails. And let's uh, create a value for the email. And this isn't actually going to be sending the email. So this is going to be the first email that we're going to be testing. And we can output using the log for debugging to check to see if it's a valid email. And we're just going to pass in the value into the send email val. And validating the email. So let's try out the test email function. And right now we get the value of false being returned. And let's try it directly to the validate email. And we'll see what's being returned back. So it's being back to return back as true. And uh, the problem was that it's not within the object. So we don't have it within an object. And that's why we're throwing that error. Uh, so let's update this as an object. And then that way we can send it through as an email. Uh, so that was the issue there, that it's not within the object format. And when we are doing the testing, we want to make sure that it's as accurate and close to what we are actually sending the parameters as possible. So now within the val, we're going to retrieve it back as data. And within the data, there's going to be a property name of email. So let's try that one more time. And now we're getting the value of true. Uh, let's remove it so that it's not a valid email and we'll see what happens. So we get a value of false. So this is a quick way to check to make sure that it is a valid email. Uh, we've run some tests on it, so everything looks like it's working properly. So we can move that function down and let's continue to build out that we where we are selecting and getting a valid email. So we're gonna be using the mail app and this is a quick way to send an email using the send email method over to an email address. So we're gonna set this up as an object so that we can send it as an HTML email. And it does require some parameters. So it does require a two. And in this case, I'm gonna be sending it, the first email to myself. So we'll send it over to us as a valid email. And we know that this is already a valid email. So we can actually, instead of having it there, we can always send every email to us. So that's an option as well that we can set up. So right now we'll just keep it at that and subject. And the subject can be web form email. And maybe we wanna put uh, new or something like that. And you can always customize and change these as needed. So within the HTML body, this is going to be where we've got the body contents of the email. And we can deconstruct uh, some of the JSON data if we want. Uh, or we can just send it as that we do have the data that's being sent in. Uh, so let's try that out. And we'll just, for now, we'll just add in under the data email object. And because this is going to be an HTML email, I'm just going to wrap this within a div. And I'm using the back ticks, so those are the template literals. And those are also allowed within Google Apps Script. And that's where we're able to set the value. And this uh, wasn't a proper object, so that's why it threw the error there. So now we've got a string value that we're sending through and a send email. So let's do a test email. One of the things, whenever you add in and select a new service, you're going to get the review permissions pop up. So this is something that whenever you're adding in new permissions for your app to be able to apply, so connecting to the spreadsheet or email, you've got to go run through and select to accept the permissions. So I'm just going through and accepting the permissions, allowing the app to send content as me. The reason we don't have a valid email is because I never updated it to be a valid email. So let's update that. And now this time we're gonna to try to send it through test email. And I'm gonna create my own 
so that we can see the value. Uh, so the test email simulating the content coming from the web form is going to be going to my email address plus 999 and then the default email that's going to be sent regardless whenever anyone submits the web form is going to be sent to this address. So let's go ahead and update this and then now within the object we can send it to the data email. Uh, we can also update so we've got the data email so within this object, I'm going to construct the email. So this is going to be the, we can call it email body. And this is going to be the HTML body. So I'll just update that. And then this is going to be the string value that we're going to send through. So it'll just be a little bit cleaner on the code and a little bit easier to read. And this will give us an opportunity to customize some of the values that we're sending through. So we've got the email body. Um, and then next item, so let's uh, get the name from the form, and that's going to be the name. And then we also want to add to it the message. So just add to the email body variable and update that. And we want to add the message value as well. And that's coming from the data message. So that should be all of the input fields that we have uh, that we're sending through. And let's actually construct that. And this is going to be actually the email body that we're sending to us. And then we might want to have a special one for the email body for the user. So let's create that. So this can be the response HTML. And set that up as an H2. Thank you and then using whatever we have for the data name. This is the user's name from the input field that we're sending and adding to them. It's using the email bot, uh, data email to send the email to that person. And because we've added in the value for the, when we're doing the post, we're getting a row value. We can use that as well. So message received, so just set this up as div message received ID, and then whatever we want to set for the ID value. So this is going to be coming from the data row value. Close off that div. And now in order to simulate it, we can set up a simulated email within our test email. Uh, so we can add in all of the values so the name, and the name can be tester. That's the email address that it's going to, message, and then whatever we want. So this can just be hello world. And because we're using the row value, uh, let's add that in within the testing object. So let's send it out as row value 50. So let's uh, try it out and see. So it was a valid email. And going into our inbox. So this is coming from the form information that was submitted. There's our form information. And then this is the email that went out to the user. So we can also customize that. Uh, so this can say, thank you for your email. So it'll say, we will respond shortly, message received, ID, and whatever the row ID is from that user. And that's gonna be coming from the spreadsheet ID. So it looks like we're ready to send the email with the data. And uh, let's uh, just update this as a send email. And now we should get the result back. So this is actually send email, send my email, and it's gonna be sending the JSON data. So let's save that and we're gonna do a new deployment with the email values from the web form. And we won't have to update the web form uh, as we're just updating the Google Apps script at this point. So do the deployment of it, copy the web URL. Let's go back into the JavaScript code and we'll make an update of the endpoint URL and then we'll try out and send ourselves an email. So let's go ahead and try it and I'll open up this large and there we've got our response back. So we've got the content from our email, the email address, the message, the name, the result. Uh, so the result was true because it was a valid email address. Uh, the row value is seven. So that should have inserted into row seven. 
Uh, there's our inserted value, and then we've got a status of success. Let's check the inbox and see if we've got the emails that came in. Uh, so there's the new email from the form and all of the form contents, and as well the thank you email with the message received in ID 7, which is going to correspond to the row value for the within the spreadsheet. So that concludes the project. And again, we didn't have to make any updates to the JavaScript. If you do update the input fields, then you need to update them as well within the spreadsheet in order to match. And we are creating it within the object. So make sure that these object property names match the column names within the spreadsheet. And you'll be able to insert additional fields that way as well into the spreadsheet. And of course, you can make customizations to the input field. And now that this is working, we can comment out these. And we also have the error message. And the only other last part of it is that we want to, once we do send the email, we want to be able to do something with the response back. So we do get a result back within the response object. So let's uh, try that still one more time. So let me uncomment these while we're still doing the testing. We'll send the message. And if we get a response back, we should, for one, we should uh, remove out the form options. So within the My Form, so once it gets submitted, we don't want the user to be able to submit it again. So we could select the Submit button and disable that button. So the selecting the Submit button, and that's with the type Submit. So that's going to be selecting using the document and Query Selector. Select the input field with the type of Submit. And that will allow us to identify that element on the page. And once the button gets submitted, then we can hide the form. And we can also disable the button. So once uh, the button is clicked, we can set it to disabled and set that to be true. Send an error. Let's update this and we'll set that to be disabled to false so that the user can make updates to it. We've disabled it to false. Uh, if we do submit the data, then we can't submit it again, uh, so we're disabled the button. And we might also want to hide the form. So the My Form, we can select the full My Form object and update its style properties to be display none. Uh, so let's do that as we're sending the email. And this will update the style to display and set that to be none. So that will hide all of the input form. And we might also want to create a new field that's going to say sending the email. So let's add that in over here where we'll create a new form. And this can be a re response div and where we can have some content for the user. So using the document, create elements, create a div within the response div. Let's update the text content and we can say submitted. So submitted and then we'll update this once we do get a response back. Uh, let's append that to the main element. So the one with the class of my form, so we'll append it to that main div. Uh, we can select that and create an object for that as well. It's a little bit easier when you do have them all as selected elements. So selecting the my form, and this is the main container. So I'm just giving it a value of main, and this is where I'm going to add in that div into. So main append and append the div that we just created. Or it's going to say waiting. And you can customize these messages as needed. We do get a response back. And the response back has a value there as a uh, as a row value. So once the response is there, we can check to see if the JSON row value. And if there is a row value, then we'll update the response, set the text value of that field to say message sent. And then we can add in the row value there. 
and that's coming from the JSON row value. So your ID is. If it's not there, then we might want to just remove that element and we'll update and we'll trigger an error. So we'll show the form once again and just say that there was a problem with the form submission. So we have to uh, enable, so disabled equals false. So disabled is false. And then let's uh, do the opposite where we're gonna take the my form and we'll display it as block. So that will show it once again. So if there are any errors with the submission, uh, we'll be able to get that as a response. So message, so oops, looks like there was a problem there with the response object coming back. So within the JSON row, and that's because I was using the uppercase there. So that should be lowercase. And we'll try that one more time. And this time it should work. So we've got the row value of 12. So message sent, your ID is 12. And then you can customize how you want the content to be output. So go ahead and try it out and create your own version of the web form that's going to send data to your inbox. And this is all going to be done with JavaScript code and Google Apps Script.